with a split end right and wide receiver left. Back to throw right away over the middle intended for Carter. Incomplete out at the 28-yard line. He had the opening, and the pass hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it at the 28-yard line. Just a quick slant over the middle, and it ended up just a drop pass by Carter. So Michigan starting out, instead of with the running game, testing the passing waters already. And as we'll see in replays tonight, Carter was open. Looked like the ball may have been just tipped a little bit by the linebacker, but good coverage. Uh, and nice to see him miss the first one. Second and 10 as Smith goes back to throw again. Now he keeps it and comes off left tackle out across the 25, out to the 30, 31, and he's brought down after getting a Michigan first down. The tackle by Bobby Stoops, Iowa's strong safety. So it'll be first and 10 for Michigan at their own 31. Smith faded back to throw and looked like he never intended to throw. He just headed it back upfield. Out of the ball game comes Craig Dunaway. Norm Betts is back in at tight end. Across the front for Iowa defensively, it's Tippett, Borch, Dean, Picar, and Webb. High formation with a wing back off to the left side this time. Now in motion. Handoff coming right side to Edwards. Breaks it through the line. 35, 40, 45, 45 yard line. He's brought down. Tracy Crocker and Jimmy Frazier trip him up. As Stanley Edwards on the draw from his fullback spot found a big opening as he wound his way through the line of scrimmage. They don't usually give it to the first guy, but when they do, as you can see, it works. And Stanley Edwards, a good runner in his own right, moving the fullback this year, got a lot of good yardage. Michigan so, offensive line is winning the line of scrimmage so far, Joe. They certainly are. Wide to the left is Carter. Wide to the right is Vince Bean. A wing back off to the left side. Again, the eye. Now in motion back to the right side. Handoff coming off the right side to the fullback Edwards. Pat Dean brought him down at the 48-yard line. Pick up on the play of about two. It'll be second and eight for Michigan. So the Wolverines, who went to the air in a first play, have stayed on the ground ever since and successfully have moved the ball. That time, Iowa didn't overshift when they put a man in motion as they did the last time, and Edwards was able to cut back. This time, the linebackers are there, and Edwards had no room to run. Wide to the right is Bean. Wide to the left is Carter. Again out of the eye. Wolfolk has yet to carry the ball. The world-class tailback, world-class sprinter. Now he gets it on the counter, going back to the left side. Looks for some blocking, trying to get around the corner. Crocker's got him around the corner and runs him out of bounds on the far side of the field, around midfield. Tracy Crocker took the corner away from Wolfolk. Iowa strung it out, but Wolfolk, with his great speed, still ended up gaining about two or three yards. Let's see where it's marked. Inside the Iowa 49-yard line. So a pickup on the play of about three or four, and it'll be third down now and about four yards to go. Maybe we can talk about key third down plays early. This has got to be a key one. Iowa has to slow down the Michigan offense. Wide receivers to either side. Bean and Carter out of the eye. Back to throw is Smith. Looks, fires it down and out to Carter. Too long and incomplete at the Iowa 38-yard line. Lou King with coverage over here on Anthony Carter, but the pass was just flat overthrown, so now it's a punting situation for Michigan. Don Bracken, a sophomore from Thermopolis, Wyoming, is the punter. Deep for Iowa. Jeff Brown is the deep man, and short man is Bobby Stoops. Bracken stands at his 37-yard line to receive this punt. He'll be punting into a pretty good win. But with a bowl like this, it's really hard to gauge how much wind there actually is down on the surface of the field. There's the snap. The kick is on the way. He gets off a of beauty. Fair catch by Brown, and it's all the way into the end zone against the wind. That's about a 48-yarder into the wind, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line for Iowa for their first possession of the ball game. So Iowa comes out on offense. Gordy Bohannon, the senior quarterback from Eagle Rock, California, will operate the offense. I think a key on uh, for the Iowa offense today is how well uh, Bill Bailey does at center. That's this right. His first start, and he was the third-team center just a week ago. High formation now for the Hawks. Split end to the right in Brown. Wide receiver left. Now double split ends. Hand off, tailback Eddie Phillips, straight up the middle. He fights for maybe two yards in the whole middle of the Michigan defense. On the stop, Keith Bostic, the strong safety, and Paul Geargash, an inside linebacker, make the stop. Defensively for Michigan across the 
uh, front, the front three, Cedric Coles at left tackle. The middle guard is Doug James. The right tackle, Tony Osmond. Outside linebackers, Ben Needham and Robert Thompson. The inside linebackers, Paul Geargash and Mike Boren. Iowa comes out with a second and nine from the 21-yard line. Just underway in the first quarter. High formation, split ends to either side. In motion, Ivory Webb, a wide receiver. Play action fake, back to throw, Bohannon down the middle, intended for Webb, incomplete. Double coverage down there. The ball was tipped by Keith Bostick. It was overthrown to Ivory Webb, but Tony Jackson and Keith Bostick had him covered like a blanket on the play down the middle to Ivory Webb. And it looked like Webb has him beat uh, a little bit going down in the middle in that seam. But the ball and two defenders seem to converge at the same time. It's the Michigan uh, secondary, Tom, that uh, last year only gave up three touchdown passes for the entire season. They've already given up six so far this year. They've got some great athletes back there, no doubt about it. Split in left is Jeff Brown. In the slot is Ivory Webb to the left side. Third and nine for Iowa on their 21. On the quarterback keeper is Bohan, and he stretches it to the 25. Paul Giergash, an inside linebacker, junior from Lakewood, Ohio, makes the stop, and Iowa will be fourth and five in a punting situation. And you can hear the Michigan crowd giving the defense a standing ovation. Deep for Michigan to receive the punt is Cooper and Jackson, Tony Jackson and Evan Cooper. Roby gets the snap at his 10. The rush is on, but he gets it off. Low line drive. He kind of snubbed that one. Gathered in by Cooper at his 30. Back to the 35. Ball stripped. It's loose. And Almost. I think Iowa's got it. At the 38-yard line of Michigan, Cooper is stripped of the ball on the punt return, and the Iowa Hawkeyes have it in operating position at the Michigan 38. I think Dave Strobel came up with it. And Roby hit one of them low liners that uh, causes good runbacks. Now, and here you see him coming up the field, but Iowa really strips the ball there. Number 66 did the job on it. Relk stripped the ball, and Strobel recovered it. John Relk, the one that stripped the ball, the junior from Durant, about a 45-yard punt. Iowa will operate out of the pro set. Gordy Bohannon had to stop and tie his shoe before he got up there. First and 10 from the Michigan 38. Back to throw is Bohannon. He's chased out of the pocket. Looks right, and he'll be sick! Back at the 46-yard line. Tony Osborne, the right tackle, a junior from Kenton, Ohio, sacks Bohannon back deep at the 46-yard line of Michigan. That'll be a loss of about eight yards on the play. And Bohannon, who had enough time, Denny, just didn't uh, find anybody open downfield. He had plenty of time, and I thought he could get around the tackle, but uh, he just didn't get the job done. Good coverage downfield by the Michigan Wolverines. Ivory Webb was the main target there, but he had two blue shirts all over him. Second down now and 18 from the Michigan 46 out of the eye. Split end left, wide receiver right for the Hawkeyes. Bohannon takes the long count. Drops back to throw over the middle to Moritz, and he's down to the 36. He picked up the yardage lost, and then about another two. Jerry Berge, the uh, junior left corner, weak cornerback, second string behind Murray and Body was in that time and made the stop. And it's marked down at the Michigan 36-yard line, a slant over the middle. Moritz from Chicago St. Rita with good hands, of course, but uh, looks like Michigan plans to send at least one linebacker every time. I thought Bohannon did a good job that time of picking up the uh, linebackers were coming. Third and seven for, Mich for Iowa now at the Michigan 36. Out of the eye. Split end and slot man to the left side. Bohannon. Rolls left to throw. Skips one tackle, fires down the left side, and complete the web inside the 15 and down to the 11-yard line. Tackle made by Marion Body, but Bohannon, who avoided a tackle, and as he was going down by, in the hands of Robert Thompson, he uh, found Ivory Webb open in the middle of a zone down there on the left side and got all the way down to the 11-yard line for an Iowa first down. Boy, Bohannon did that really all on his own because he had two tacklers draped on him. He was falling down and still got the ball down the web with something on it. So Iowa, first and 10 now from the Michigan 11. Have the power eye in now with two tight ends. Alt and Hufford, the tight ends. Handoff tailback, Eddie Phillips. Goes off left guard and gets down inside the nine, close to the eight-yard line. 
before he's finally stopped by Tony Osborne and Mike Bourne. Osborne, the right tackle, and Mike Bourne, a sophomore inside linebacker from Columbus, Ohio. Well, I was noticing on the roster that uh, Bo gets an awful lot of players out of Ohio. Yes, he does. He knows. The cradle of coaches, he knows where to look in there. It looks <laughs> like they're keying on Phillips quite a bit, too, today. Yeah. Every time he's touched the ball, they've been right on him. Norm Granger, the fullback, has not carried the ball yet. It's second and ten, uh, second and about eight from the nine-yard line now for Iowa. Pro set with a wing back to the left side. The wing back, Jeff Brown, is in motion, and there's a flag. Delay a game. It will be too much time against Iowa, which will take it back out to about the 14-yard line. Costly penalty for the Hawkeyes when they're deep in Michigan territory. John Iowa has been penalized 42 times this year for 305 yards and they've had four touchdowns called back in the last two games because of penalties. Mm. So now the Hawks are second down and 13 from the Michigan 14 yard line as Phillips and Granger set up in the pro set a wing back left side is Dave Moritz. Double tight ends in motion is Moritz back to the right side. Play action fake, rolling right as Bohannon back to the left, completes it to Hufford, the tight end, breaks one tackle and dives to the five-yard line. Jerry Berge, the weak cornerback, down here to make the stop for Michigan as Hufford just floated away from the flow from his tight end spot and uh, was open, but Berge never followed the flow of the play. He stayed out there with Hufford and stayed home and saved Michigan a touchdown. Drop. That was a pretty good call. Because Field goal from the 11. Tom Nickel will try the 21 yard field goal from the right hash mark. There's the snap. Kicks on the way. It's up and good. And with 7 11 left in the first quarter of play, Iowa has gone on top of Michigan by a score of 3 to nothing. Denny Thiessen and Tom Cornelis back at U of M Stadium as Iowa has gone on top 3 to nothing over Michigan on a 21 yard field goal by Tom Nickel. Here's the kickoff by Roby off the left side of his foot. It'll go. Out of bounds at the one yard line in Michigan. Or a flag is thrown on Iowa and they'll come back to kick it over. It'll be a five yard penalty against Iowa. Roby's kicks so far have not been the booming type despite the fact that he's got the wind behind them and his one punt was kind of, uh, uh, well, not up to his standard, I would say, especially with a wind behind it. And both kickoffs has gone right where Anthony Carter is. Yeah, and you'd think he'd be kicking away from Anthony Carter. I think Iowa's got to be glad to take those three points because anytime Michigan gives you anything, you better capitalize. That's Even right. though they didn't get the touchdown, uh, they got on the board first. I think that's quite an, um, an emotional plus on their side. Well, and the turnovers and takeaways this year, uh, Michigan offense has lost the ball 11 times, and their defense has taken the ball away 12 times for a plus one, where Iowa has a big difference here. The offense has lost the ball 11 times, but their defense has 19 takeaways. Now that's 20 takeaways for a plus nine. Roby will kick off again, this time from his 35. Anthony Carter and Stanley Edwards deep to receive the kick. Here's the boot this time. It's a straight high end over end. Carter, eight yards deep in the end zone. He'll bring it out. He's at the 5, 10, 15, knocked down at the 20-yard line. And he got back to where he would have been had he not brought it out. Tackle made by Kevin Spitzig for Iowa, the second string uh, right side linebacker. That just shows what a great leg uh, Roby has. He goes five yards back and almost kicks it out of the end zone. That's right. I was really surprised again that Carter brought it out. Well, I think we're uh, kind of lucky uh, that it, Roby kicked it as deep as he did because that was a 28-yard return from where he took it from. Eye formation for Michigan with Stanley Edwards and Butch Wolfolk in the eye. Butch Wolfolk gets it left side going left tackle, trying to get around the corner. He does 25, 30, 35 and brought down at the 38 yard line a big 18 yard pickup that time and Mel Cole makes the stop for Iowa. That time Jimmy Frazier also in there helping out that time it's actually marked the 39 so a 19 yard pickup by Wolf Oak and Iowa initially Denny made a pretty good job of stringing that one out but Wolf Oak made it on his own. Once Quick he cut outside and it's a good thing Frazier held his ground there he fought it fought off a blocker. Crocker was there to help along with Mel Cole, but it could have been a big one. Back to throw Smith over the middle. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Smith's pass was shoved right back in his face just after he let go of it. Andre Tippett, I believe, got his hands on the ball, and it'll be second and ten now for Michigan at their own 39-yard line. Michigan has really had trouble this year getting their passing attack uh, 
going, and I hope it uh, continues for one more week. Smith is only completing 41% of his passes this year. The uh, Michigan offensive plays are coming in with the tight ends. Right now, Norm Betts is in there. High formation on a second and 10 for Michigan from their 39. Split end left, wide receiver right. Smith optioning right. Pitches coming around the corner behind Wolf Oak. It's loose, and I think Iowa, the is going it again. Loose. Iowa recovers. Oh, no, it's still loose, John. Well, let's see. Who's got it? Now Michigan holds on. I couldn't believe Betts. it was still loose. Norm Betts came up with it, I well, think. Five wide shirts on that ball and it squirted out somehow. Norm Betts of Michigan eventually came up with it, and Iowa had their hands on it all over the place. Well, Tippett took the quarterback. That was it. Laid Smith out, and then the uh, pitch was just a little bit behind Wolfhook there. And the Hawks had a great chance to recover. I caught five, four shirts around the ball, but somehow it just squirted loose. And Norm Betts gets it. Michigan now third down and 16 on their own 33. Smith back to throw. Looks. Home run ball down the right side intended for Carter way long double coverage down here by Lou King and Bobby Stoops and it was way overthrown it'll be fourth down in a punting situation for Michigan as the Iowa defense does it and Don Bracken will do the booting for Michigan. He'll be standing about his 20 yard line three to nothing Iowa leads Michigan with 601 left in the first quarter. Jeff Brown deep for Iowa back at his 27 yard line. The short man to receive punt is Bobby Stoops standing up at his 38. Bracken stands at his 19 to receive the snap. Jeff Brown leads the Big Ten in punt returns too. John averaging 15.1 yards a return. There's the snap. Iowa peels off for return coverage. It'll go to Jeff Brown at his 22 up the middle and dropped at the 25. The ball is loose and Iowa has it back. Lou King at the 22 yard line. Blown dead though John at the 24. Okay. It's blown dead the at the one 24. One official blew it dead. I don't think the other one was going to give it to him. It'll be Iowa's ball at their own 24. I think uh, Lou King came up with it anyway even if it wouldn't yeah. have been blown dead. Brown was stripped of the ball as he was brought down. I'd like to remind you, uh, don't forget to stay with us through the whole game. In the fourth quarter, we'll be drawing a name for one of those from our entries for that used Iowa Hawkeye football. Ball used in games and practiced by the Hawkeyes. If you haven't entered, do so by sending your entry to football KSTT, Box 3788, Davenport 52808. Iowa, first and 10 from their 24. Out of the eye. Split ends to either side. Man in motion is Jeff Brown. He'll get it on the wing back counter. Out to the 25. Skips to the 29 yard line. And Jeff Brown, a five yard pickup. Jerry Berge comes up to make the stop for Michigan. And the ball will be marked close to the 30, right between the 29 and 30 yard line. Pick up on the play of six, actually. And it'll be second and four. That was a good first down call, John. Anytime you can get, uh, you know, four, five, six yards right off the bat. A great call. Three to nothing, the Iowa lead. There is 519 left in the first quarter. Iowa with a split end left, wide receiver, right eye formation this time on a second and four. Now a shift into a pro set. Timeout called by Bohannon. Bohannon trying to audible into another formation, ends up calling a timeout before he runs into a five yard delay of game penalty. So it's The Hawkeyes out of a pro set now a shift with a tight end to the right side split end left wide receiver right on a second and four optioning right Bohan and he keeps it he's at the 35 the 40 and the 41 yard line and he's got the Iowa first down Keith Bostic the strong safety comes up to make the stop along with outside linebacker Ben Needham and the ball up to the 41 yard line Bohannon picks up the first down as he kept it stepped back option to the right and turned it upfield. Good ball uh, faking there too as the Michigan defenders went for the fake and Bohannon is a good good option quarterback picked up a big big game. Wide to the right is Ivory Webb wide to the left is Jeff Brown on a first and 10 for Iowa at their own 41 pro set in the backfield. 440 left in the quarter back to throw Bohannon quick drop over the middle Hufford the tight end is the 40 and dives to the 36 of Michigan. Mike Hufford the tight end and the tackle on the play by the secondary of Michigan down at the 36 yard line and again Tom.
Hufford showing those great hands that he's shown in the last three games for Iowa. Well, he really did, and that pass had to be right there, which it was. Led perfectly over the Michigan linebackers, and uh, Bohannon really has the offense clicking right now. I think it was just a great throw. Boy, he had to get it over the linebackers. He had to have a touch on it, and he really threw the ball well that time. At the 36-yard line, first and 10 for Iowa. They lead 3 to nothing now. Pro set in motion. Jeff Brown back to the wide side on the right. Bohannon back to throw. Pumps. Comes around on the wing back counter. It goes to Brown. 35, 30, 25, 20. And tipped up there. Brought down by Keith Bostick. The strong safety at the 20-yard line. As Brown went from the short side to the wide side in motion. And then circled all the way around and took the handoff on the counter coming back to the left side. And he got big yardage down to the 20. Some great blocking on that play, especially by guard Joe Lavellas, who snuck out there. And then uh, after he gets the ball back, you see him cut to the inside. Great downfield blocking. He was only one block away from maybe breaking it. Is that one of the exotics? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Has to classify as an exotic. First and 10 for Iowa, just inside the Michigan 20. 350 left in the first quarter. Pro set, split end left, wide receiver right. Optioning quarterback keeper, and Bohannon is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Right there was Paul Giergas, the inside linebacker. Bohannon faked the handoff to the fullback Granger and then kept it, but standing right there saying hello was Giergas. He stepped right in the slot. I don't think it would have mattered if he'd given the ball to Granger or not because both Granger and Bohannon got racked right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, they lost a yard on the play, and it's now second and 11 from just outside the Michigan 20. 3.17 left in the first quarter. 3 to nothing. the Iowa lead over Michigan. Again, the pro set. Split end right, Brown. Wing, uh, wide receiver left is Webb. Back to throw is Bohannon. He looks, looks, fires down the right sideline, incomplete. He had two receivers converging over there on the right side of the end zone. Jeff Brown was over there along with Eddie Phillips, the tailback. Marion Body with coverage over there for Michigan, so it's incomplete. It'll be third and 11. That's kind of odd when two receivers end up that close together on long pattern. I think someone must have uh, ran a busted route there because uh, well, Brown wasn't quite sure if it was for him and Phillips wasn't quite sure if it was for him and went in between them. And then you end up with four defensive backs over there with coverage. Four, four against two is not very good at. Third and 11 now for the Hawkeyes on the Michigan 20. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Tight end shift to the right side. Split end left. Wide receiver right. Tailback Eddie Phillips off left tackle inside the 20 to the 18 and that's it. It'll be fourth down. Mike Boren the inside linebacker makes the stop for Michigan along with outside linebacker Ben Needham. And on comes the kicking unit for Iowa. Tom Nickel, a freshman from Green Bay, will try a field goal from the left hash mark. The line of scrimmage of the 19-yard line. He puts his tee down at the 26, so it's a 36-yard attempt. Tom Grogan, the sophomore quarterback from Kansas City, will do the holding. We had plenty of foot on his last one, uh, John, so this is certainly in his range. Grogan waits on the snap. Michigan will try to block. There's the kick. It's got the distance, but it looks good. Nickel puts it through from 36 yards and with two. Reggie Roby set to kick off to Stanley Edwards and Anthony Carter. There's the boot. It's a knuckleball. It'll come down to Edwards at the one. He drops it, picks it up, comes back to the five, to the middle of the 10, across to the right side to the 15, and brought down at the 21-yard line. Tackle made for Iowa by Strawn Joseph, and he's having trouble getting up there at the 20-yard line. Now he picks himself up, and he'll go off the field. He put a big hit on Stanley Edwards, but I think Joseph got the worst end of that one. I think so. Something had to give. You know, I don't know if it's just me, John, but Michigan seems a little flat here today. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't want to wake them up or anything, no, but no. they don't really seem to be in the game quite yet. We'll see this time. Their third possession. Wide to the left is Carter. Wide to the right is Vince Bean. First and 10 from their 21. Michigan out of the eye. Quarterback Steve Smith with Stanley Edwards and Butch Woolfolk behind him. Hand off to Edwards straight up the middle, and he makes it to the 25-yard line. About a four-yard pickup on the fullback draw. Tackle made by Todd Simonson, a left-side linebacker for the Hawkeyes. Stanley Edwards. A four-yard gain, and I saw him at uh, the Big Ten lunch. In fact, I rode up the elevator with him in the hotel, and he is a well-put-together young man. Obviously, he spent a little time in a weight room. Yeah. I saw him there, too. <laughs> a nice kid, too. Second and six for Michigan now on their 25. They have a split end right in Bean. Wide to the left is Carter. 
again out of the eye with Edwards. Wolfolk pitch. Wolfolk gone left side. Looks for the corner. Gets it to the 30-yard line. And he's clothesline there by Todd Simonson. Up near the 30-yard line. It'll be marked, let's see, at the 29. Pick up on the play of four. It'll be third down and a long two, almost three yards to go for a first down for the Wolverines with a minute five left in the first quarter and a six to nothing Iowa lead. The game has kind of been reversed uh, so far from the offense. Michigan's been able to move the ball on the ground pretty well against Iowa. Hasn't completed a pass. Iowa's had a lot of trouble moving it on the ground, but has been able to throw the ball. Third and three for Michigan. Handoff going right side to Edwards, and he's dropped at the 31-yard line. Just got across the 30, and it'll be fourth down for Michigan. Edwards didn't get much of anything, maybe a yard. As Mark Bortz, the left side tackle, brought him down right across the 30-yard line. Don Bracken will punt for Michigan. He'll stand back inside his 20 to receive the punt. Jeff Brown will be back at his 30 to receive it. And 18 seconds left in the quarter. Michigan will punt this one into the wind. Unless they just take a delay of game here and let the quarter run out. And that looks like what they're going to do. And Iowa's already used two timeouts yeah. today, so they can't afford to take another one two, here. Two, one, and there's the end of the quarter. They knew they weren't going to have to use up all the time and get a delay of game before the end of the quarter, so now Bracken will get the punt with the win. Don Bracken back to punt, stands at his 16, gets it off, high floater. Jeff Brown lets it go. He lost it in the sun, and it takes a Michigan bounce inside the 20, inside the 15, and down to the 10-yard line. Jeff Brown came over to field the punt, and I suppose wisely for him, he just backed off. He lost it in the sun. That's the best thing he did. He kind of looked like Dave Kingman catching a fly ball there in uh, <laughs> Wrigley Field. He lost it completely, but wisely he got out of the way, yeah. so it wouldn't touch him. Still, the Hawks are in a hole here. Great punt that time by Bracken. Line of scrimmage was the 31 yard line. And that would be about uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All about a 60, uh, 58 yard punt or so. That was a pretty good strategy yeah. uh, waiting for the quarter to end. That's right. Punt. Iowa comes out in the hole, first and 10 on their 11 yard line. Out of the eye on the fullback counter it goes to Norm Granger breaks three tackles breaks another still driving and brought down at the 16 yard line Keith Bostic and Paul Geargash eventually knocked him down but again Tom Norm Granger showing that great power he's got yeah he got in that uh, massive heavy traffic there and he almost broke out of the pack something could have happened great leg drive by Norm Granger the ball just across the 16 yard line as Iowa leads six to nothing 14 22 left in the first half and it'll be second down and about five yards to go, a little less than five. Iowa up over the ball. Split in left, wide receiver right, out of the eye. Pitch going to Phillips right side, and he breaks it to the 20-yard line. He'll be short of first down yardage. Ben Needham and Mike Bourne make the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. Let's see where it is marked. Right at the 20-yard line. It'll be third down now for Iowa and a little less than two yards to go for a first down after Eddie Phillips picked up about four that time. Jeff Brown in with a play off the bench and he's uh, running late here so Iowa's going to have to hurry to get this playoff. Here's another one of Denny's big third down plays he likes. They've got to pick one up on the ground. Pro set. Split end right wide receiver left on his third and two. Fullback. Keeping his time is Bohannon, and he rides it to the 23, close to first down yardage. Ben Needham was over his back and had his hands around his helmet, and Bohannon carried him across the 22, and it'll be an Iowa first down. I think that shows just how strong Gordy Bohannon is, because he actually gave Needham a little piggyback ride for about two yards and picked up the first. Right between the 22 and 23-yard line, so Iowa has a little bit more room to move, and now doing a lot of changing along the line. So far, Bill Bailey at center has done okay. Unbalanced line to the right. Pitch coming right side to Phillips. Cuts it off to the 25-yard line. Picks up about two yards on the play before he's knocked down. And Michigan is playing that strong side of the Iowa offense very well. Tony Osmond made the stop that time from defensive tackle. But loading up that strong side or not, Michigan's handling it defensively. 
I'm really surprised he got anything out of that, John. The way it looked, it was all clogged in there, and he uh, got the two yards strictly on his own. It'll be second down now. The ball on the 25-yard line. Second and a little less than eight yards to go for a first down. Wide to the left is Brown. Wide to the right is Dave Strobel. Pro set on a second and eight. 12-25 left in the first half. Iowa leading Michigan 6 to nothing. Bohannon drops the throw. Down over the middle, completes it to Brown at the 28-yard line. No, it's incomplete. It was dropped, John, right away. Okay. He never did have control of the football. Incomplete coverage over there by Paul Geargash and Keith Bostic. But it looked like a pretty decent pass. It was one where he had to come down and catch it as he was falling. But just plain didn't hang on to the ball. No, hit him right in the chest. Uh, it was a low throw, but it would have been good for the first down. He had to throw it low because of the coverage. Brown just didn't hang on to it. Third down and eight now for Iowa at their own 25-yard line. And now Reggie Roby, if he has to punt, will be punting into a pretty stiff win. Unbalanced line. Now it's uh, split end and slot back to the left side. Now in motion is Jeff Brown back to the right. Back to throw. Bohan, and he gives it back around on the wing back counter to Brown. He's going to lose big yardage all the way back to the 17-yard line. Paul Geergas, the inside linebacker, was with him step for step and brought down Brown all the way back at the 17-yard line. And that's the third time that Iowa ran it twice successfully, but the third time to the well, they came up dry. Well, you could say they went to the well once too often, and Gergash, I think he, his key assignment was just the counter on that play, and he was right there, and that really seemed to give this crowd a lift, and now Roby has to punt deep in his own territory into the wind. Back to receive for Michigan, Tony Jackson on the punt. He stands at his 34. Roby's inside his five to receive the ball. Michigan's got 10 guys in a line of scrimmage to go for the block. Now they peel two off to, for the return. Roby gets it off. Low line drive. Jackson back at his 40. Upfield to the 45. 50. And knocked down at the 46-yard line of Iowa. But a flag is thrown on the play. 42-yard punt that time by Roby. But a flag was thrown on the return. And again, might be a clip. I saw number 60 for Iowa holding the back of his leg. And he's right there where the official's flag was. Mahan made the stop for Iowa that time. And the flag, let's see, we'll get the indication. A clip against Michigan on the return. So they lose a lot of that yardage they got on the return. Again, Roby's punt was the low line. Crowd is not too keen on the call. It was a legit penalty. Yeah. Isn't that their school song? <laughs> Michigan first and 10 from their 32. Out of the eye with wide receiver right and left. And off to the fullback, Stanley Edwards, and he gets out across the 34 to around the 35-yard line. Edwards on the carry that time. And the stop made by uh, Mel Cole for Iowa, the right side linebacker. Ball marked just across the 35, a pickup of three. It'll be second and seven now for Michigan. 10.57 left in the first half. Iowa leads Michigan on two Tom Nickel field goals, six to nothing. Wide to the left is... Bean wide to the right is Carter for Michigan as they work out of the eye. Now Carter in motion. He'll get the pitch coming around to the left side. Looks for the corner. Cuts it back to the middle. Back across the middle and brought down as he gets to the 43 yard line and it should be enough for a Michigan first down. Lou King came back from the weak side. The left cornerback spot to eventually make the stop but Carter who ran out of room coming to the near side improvised very well. Yeah I just got to say John they've done a pretty good job keeping Carter out of the offense and no sooner uh, thought than done as they try a little uh, wing back counter of their own there and you can see great change of field goes against the grain and uh, could have been a big one. Luke oh, King yeah. made a nice tackle. That's what makes the plays his ability to cut back against the grain. Michigan now first and 10 from their 42. Smith to his tailback Wolfo coming left side tries to get around the corner and he does and then he's ridden down at the 48 yard line by Bobby Stoops here on the near side of the field in front of the Michigan bench. Wolfolk who ne doesn't necessarily have that good of blocking that time on a play um, still used the speed to get outside that he did I think he took a little exception to uh, Stoops' high tackle there but really as the only place Bobby could grab him or he'd have been by him yep It'll be second down now and a long four, almost five yards to go after that five-yard pickup by Wolfhook. Wide to the right is Carter. Wide to the left is Bean. Again out of the eye. The ball in the Michigan 47. Man in motion, Dunaway. Up the middle, it'll go to Stanley Edwards, the fullback, and he gets to about the 48, and that's it before he's brought down. Pat Dean, the nose guard, and Todd Simonson, a left-side linebacker, make the stop. 
for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It'll be third down now and about four yards to go from the 48 yard line of Michigan. Coming in at guard is Tom Garrity right guard for Michigan and uh, Michigan will now operate on a third and four from their own 48. Back to throw is Smith down and out right side to Carter completes it inside the 40 of Iowa at the 38. Lou King with coverage over there but you have to respect Carter's speed and that's what King was doing and it probably gave him too much room but there's a flag back up field. Right around Stoops the line came in on a little blitz there John and left uh, Carter one on one with Lou King and he got to respect his speed. He was pretty pretty wide open. It's like it's going to be a personal so foul dead ball. Play. Personal foul against Iowa. A dead ball foul. So that will go then what from where they went out of bounds. Right. They'll penalize from that spot which is the 38 so it'll take it 15 more down to the uh, 23 yard line. Costly penalty against Iowa. The play itself was a big gainer but then you add 15 more yards onto it and it gives Michigan great position and now all of a sudden they're in a position to score. It's down inside the 20 at the 18 yard line personal foul against the Hawkeyes. And one score and an extra point here and after all Iowa's effort to get six points Michigan will be back on top. Wide to the right the short side of the field is Bean. wide to the left is Anthony Carter. Out of the eye nine minutes left in the first half. Steve Smith on the long count. Hand off Wolfolk on right tackle down to the 20 to 15 and down to the 14 yard line. Butch Wolfolk as he hits off the right side from his tailback spot picks up big yardage down to the nine yard line and just a little short I think of first down yardage. That Michigan line really blew off the ball that time. A big hole Wolford had on the right side. Mel and Cole. they seem uh, ready to get their offensive machinery in gear here. No Cole eventually made the stop. Big experienced offensive line from Michigan. Three very good men up the middle. Bubba Paris, Kurt Becker, uh, and Ed Moransky, the big ones. I formation now. It's second and a yard for Michigan at, their, at the nine yard line of Iowa. Double tight ends with a wide receiver. Hand off going left side Wolfolk and he gets inside the 15 down to around the 12 yard line but it'll be enough for a first down. Mel Cole and Todd Simonson make the stop for Iowa from the linebacker spots. Not a lot of yardage but all they needed was enough for the first down and they'll keep the ball. First and 10 from the 12. It looks like they're double teaming Pat Dean on that nose guard. The center and guard are both taking him out of the play. And uh, Wolfo goes to whichever side uh, is being influenced that way. So Stanley Edwards and Butch Wolfolk in the eye. Double tight ends. Anthony Carter, a wide receiver to the left side. Pitch. Wolfolk. Broken play. Comes left side and he'll be dropped for a loss at the 15 yard line. Back there, Bobby Stoops on the coming in from his safety position, fired in and made the stop at the 15. And that looked like uh, a broken play. Certainly was a good penetration by Brad Webb to slow Wolfolk up, allowing Stoops to come in and make the tackle. You want to go right, decided against it, and went back, and the Hawks were there. Everybody went one way, and Wolfolk thought it was going the other. Talking about that offensive line for Michigan, uh, Kurt Becker, a lot of people feel he may be the number one lineman drafted this year in the pro draft. You going to be his agent, Denny? I'd like to be. Michigan on a second down and 13 now from their own 15 yard line. Double tight ends with a uh, wing back off to the right. Rolling left is Smith to throw. Pumps, keeps, and is brought down out at the 17-yard line. Iowa eventually closed in on Steve Smith and drops him for another two-yard loss. Step Pat Dean finally caught up with him and brought, dropped him at the 17. A loss of another two, and it'll be third down and 15 now. He had 81, the tight end open briefly, and he's just about ready to throw it to him, and the Hawks covered. Then he had to eat the ball. Coming in this game, John, Iowa had 42 sacks in their first five ball games. That's a lot of sacks. So now it's third down. 15 from the Iowa 17. Michigan with a ball. Back to throw is Smith. Fires it into the end zone to Carter. Touchdown, Michigan. Carter beats Lou King on the right side of the end zone as he just went down and straight out to the right sideline. And he beat King by about a step, and Smith's pass was perfect. Right over the outstretched hands of King and into the waiting hands of Anthony Carter. And it's 6-6, just that quick. 
Just a perfectly thrown ball because uh, King had him corner the sideline actually another defender but right over his head right inside the goal. Now the extra point attempt it'll be Ali Haji Sheik the place kicker and B.J. Dickey second string quarterback will do the hold. Extra point attempt coming up here. Luke King is going to have his hands full today on that one side with Anthony Carter. 6.30 left in the first half. And Michigan gets on the board. And now we await the snap for the extra point. There's the snap. Kicks on the way. It's up and good. And with 6.30 left in the first half, it's Michigan 7, Iowa 6. Seven to six, the Michigan lead. Ali Haji Sheik gets set to kick off to Norm Granger and Glenn Bugs. The ball out of the end zone, beyond the end zone, and Iowa will come out to the 20 yard line, first and 10. Seven to six. Michigan takes the lead over Iowa. They scored the touchdown with 6.30 left in the first half, and a very critical play, and that was the pass play to Anthony Carter, and then Iowa had a 15 yard penalty tacked on top of it for a personal foul. Well, Anthony Carter, what we talked about it before the show, and well, I'm sure we'll mention his name many times during this game, but he's just a great one-on-one -on -one individual performer. He got behind Luke King, and the pass was right there. Give Steve Smith credit, too. Iowa. Down at the 21, 22-yard line, they had to break two tackles to do that. Ben Needham and Tony Osmond made the stop for Michigan. The ball will be marked right at the 22, a pickup of two. It'll be second and eight now for the Hawkeyes. Seven to six, the Michigan lead over Iowa. That's the play Iowa had so much success with last week against Indiana where they faked the pitch and then handed the ball back to Granger. And that time, uh, Michigan was not fooled at all. They had a cr uh, score that got a big cheer here at the U of M Stadium. Michigan State in the first quarter leading Wisconsin 12 to nothing. High formation now for the Hawks on a second and eight from their 22. Fullback counter, it goes to Granger again, breaks one tackle and out across the 30 for the first down. Norm Granger picks up the first down and a great carry. Keith Bostick and Mike Bourne come up to make the stop for the Wolverines, but it's about an eight to nine yard pickup by Granger and good for the first down. Well, if it doesn't work to the left, try it to the right or vice versa. It worked that time. Good running by Norm Granger. Interesting score in the Michigan State uh, game, yeah. John. Uh, Wisconsin, although they played great, they played at home all the time. So now they're going to find out a little bit about the rigors of the road. Iowa now first and 10 from there, 31. Split end right, wing back to the left side. He's in motion. It's Ivory Webb, again out of the eye. Back to throw. Bohannon rolls right, evades one tackler, keeps it, runs around the corner, and out of bounds around the 35-yard line, just short of the 35, Mike Bourne. Chased him over here, and Ben Needham is the one that ran him out of bounds. Short side on the right is Ivory Webb. Second and six for the Hawks from just short of their own 35. Now a shift as Hufford, the tight end, shifts to the left side. Hand off to Phillips, straight up the middle to the 40, and out to the 46-yard line. Eddie Phillips on the draw from the tailback spot. Mike Bourne made the stop, but Phillips carries all the way out to the 46. Jerry Berge also helping out on the tackle. First down for Iowa on that carry straight up the middle by Eddie Phillips, and he limps off to the far side of the field. That play really opened quickly, and some great blocks by Ron Holster and Moline up there and there, and downfield blocking. Eddie Phillips could have broken it. And Phillips limps off the field to the far side. First replaced by uh, Phil Blacher. First time today Iowa, that Iowa's been able to move the ball on the ground. First and 10 from the 46. Back to throw is Bohannon. Fires it down the middle. Hufford incomplete. He was step for step with him was inside linebacker Paul Geargash and Hufford had to dive and look around Geargash at the same time and try and come up with it one handed. He got the hand on it, but not enough that he could hold on to the ball. Made a supreme effort and uh, could have been a borderline to interference penalty here. Good defense really though. Hufford has to reach around him. Geargash is right there. Well, Hannon uh, missed his first pass today then hit four in a row and has now missed his last three. Seems to be in a streaks today. Hope he gets on one of those hot streaks again. Split end left is Moritz. Now he's a wide receiver as they shift the tight end Hufford to the left side. Straight up the middle to Blacher. Breaks one tackle and gets to midfield just inside the 50-yard line. Jerry Berge and Mike Bourne make the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. 
just inside the 50, about a ball length inside the 50. It'll be third down now and about six yards to go for the Hawks, just inside the midfield stripe in Michigan territory. 4.20 left in the first half. Michigan leads Iowa by a score of 7-6. to six. And Bohannon, when he has gone back to throw today, has had pretty good protection. Not too bad. Pro set for Iowa on a second, a third and six. Split in left, wide receiver right. Now one set back, back to throw Bohannon. Looks, looks, down the right sideline, goes to Webb. Incomplete at the 12-yard line. He had it in his hands. He was fighting Berge for the ball. They bumped each other, and Webb ended up dropping the ball. Although it did get to him, and he had it in his hands. Yeah, it hit him right in the hands, and uh, the defender fell down. And I, I think Webb was all of a sudden kind of surprised that it got through him. He thought he might have to play a little pass defense all of a sudden, but the ball does hit him right in the hands. It would have been a, a tough catch, but a great catch. They the were defender battling. fell down just right in front of him. Battling step for step, and Bohannon did, in fact, get it to him. Fourth down, down six, and Iowa will punt. Tom Nickel, the freshman, in the punt. He stands at his 37. Back for Michigan is Don't Tony Jackson inside his 15-yard line. There's the snap to Nickel. Gets it off, almost blocked. It's a low one, but it takes a lateral bounce, and Iowa bounce and goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line of Michigan. Got a 30-yard punt. <clears throat> Nickel's job just to interesting thing when the offensive line come out there. They uh, made motions to the crowd to get up, make some noise. So they're cheering the crowd on. Wolverines first and ten from their 20. Pitch coming left side. Wolfolk being strung out. Gets to the 22-yard line before he's brought down. Michigan strong side, and Iowa handled it defensively. Pat Dean up to make the stop along with uh, Clay Ulanek. I think the biggest cheer of the game so far has been when they announced that Michigan State score yeah, over that's Wisconsin. Right. <laughs> that's right. 12 to nothing. Michigan State leading Wisconsin in the first quarter. 318 left in the first half here. Michigan leading 7 to 6. Has the ball on a second and nine. From their own 21. Smith on the draw to Wolfolk, the tailback. Gets out to the 25 and brought down at the 27, 28 yard line. Mel Cole and Todd Simonson, the linebackers, who dropped off quickly on pass coverage and then came up to make the stop. Ball marked at the 27. It'll be third down and three now for the Wolverines. Third and three with 2.46 left in the first half. And Michigan got on top after Iowa kicked two field goals. Michigan came back with a touchdown pass from Steve Smith to Anthony Carter. Carter comes out now. He's replaced by the tight end. They have a two tight ends and an eye formation on a third and three. Smith rolls right, looks to throw, keeps it. Gets to the 30, the 35, and is finally brought down at the 38-yard line. Andre Tippett brought him down. Tippett had picked him up and was trying to strip the ball, but in so doing, carried Smith about three yards further than he would have gone anyway. So it's first and 10 for Michigan now at their 38. Good play by Smith, who shows he's quite a runner, too. Uh, didn't really have anybody open, took it inside. He had the first down gain. And then got an extra, as you mentioned, extra little five-yard trip, courtesy of Andre Tippett. Smith seems to be settling into the ball game now. Yeah, I think he is. Michigan now with a split end left, wide receiver right, play action, fake car back to throw. Smith to Carter, complete at the 38 or 42-yard line of Iowa. Bobby Stoops with a tackle on the coverage down here. And Stoops is upset about something. He was talking to one of the officials. But he's the one that hit Anthony Carter down here on the near side of the field. The timing, once again, is just perfect. Uh, of course, you know they work on this time and time again, but the ball hangs up there just as Carter makes his cut right in front of Stoops. Stoops tries to strip the ball, and uh, they fall out of bounds. First and 10 for Michigan now on the Iowa 42, 43-yard line. A minute 53 left in the first half. Michigan with a split end left, wide receiver right. On the quarterback keeper, Smith improvises and is dropped for a loss. He started the bootleg left and faked the handoff and kept it, and Iowa smelled it. Pat Dean and Brian Stratus make the stop for the Hawkeyes. Back outside the 45 at the 46-yard line, and Michigan calls a timeout. A minute 38 left in the first half. The score is Michigan 7, Iowa 6.
Michigan now second down 14 Smith back to throw and he's sacked back at midfield Steve Smith Andre Tippett closed in on him along with Pat Dean and Smith went back to throw on that second down and long yardage and ended up losing back to the 50 lost five that time and it's now third down for Michigan and about 17 yards to go for a first down. The Hawks are really getting a, a good pass rush now. Of course, they, the odds are they are going to pass, but you, you're seeing some penetration in that backfield the last couple of plays. A minute left in the first half as Michigan breaks huddle, leading 7-6 to six over Iowa. Pro, uh, I formation now for the Wolverines on a third and 18. Split and left, wide receiver right. And there's a oh, whistle game. and a flag. It'll be too much time on the Wolverines, I believe. Too much time, and then there's an altercation out there between Dave Brown of Iowa and Bubba Paris of Michigan. I think this is, uh, again, a, a very key time for Iowa with 48 seconds left to go in the half. They've got to stop Michigan here, and if they can go in at the half down 7-6, they'll take the opening kickoff of the second half with maybe some momentum. And I think they, you know, after you've played with the team for half, I think you can gain that confidence. You can stay with them for the full ball game. They can't give them a cheap one here. Three points or a touchdown. Michigan third and 23 now and I have the obvious passing situation so we'll have to watch Vince Bean and Anthony Carter Carter goes wide to the right Bean to the short side on the left the eye formation with Edwards and Wolfolk 30 seconds left in the half clock running back to throw is Smith he looks back across the middle it's complete to Bean inside the 40 down to the 38 and it'll be short a first down yardage. Tracy Crocker, the right cornerback, makes the stop for Iowa. Timeout called by Michigan with 13 seconds left in the half. And they're on the 38-yard line of Iowa. Be probably alert for a quick out to Carter or, uh, or Wolfhawk on the uh, delay. Split end left, wide receiver right. Back to throw is Smith. Pumps, fires, the home run ball on the right side. It's incomplete. Anthony Carter and Lou King fighting each other down there at the five yard line. They were bumping and bumping. Anthony Carter wanted a pass interference call, but he didn't get it. They've been a little more liberal in a lot of cases this year with how they call pass interference. There was definitely contact there, as we can see on the replay, Tom. Well, Carter uh, does a little cut in, and the pass goes out. And uh, just a question now is a free ball, and both players are going for it. But incidental conduct. No. <laughs> So it's fourth down now for, or that was the fourth down play, and Iowa takes over on downs at their own 38-yard line with only seven seconds left in the half. Well, will Bohannon load up, or will they be content to run it out? Pro set with a wing back to the right side. Bohannon sends Ivory Webb in motion to the left. He goes on the draw to Phil Blacher and he gets out across the 45 to the 46 yard line and that'll be halftime. Well, wait a minute, timeouts called by Iowa with one second left. So Iowa uses up its last timeout with a second. Left. They are second and two from their own 46 yard line. <clears throat> Bohannon sends Moritz wide to the left. Wide to the right is Hufford. In the slot is Brown. So. Three wide receivers and a pro set in the backfield with Granger and Blacher. Now Brown is in motion back to the left side. Bohannon goes back to throw. Looks. Pumps out in the right flat. It goes to Granger. He's to the 50. Gives ground. Runs into one of his own blockers. Still going and finally brought down at midfield. And there's the end of the first half of play at University of Michigan Stadium where Michigan leads Iowa 7-6. Glenn Bugs, Granger doesn't qualify in terms of the number of returns needed to lead the Big Ten, but in terms of average, he does that and leads the nation, too. Here's the kickoff, high end over end. It'll be Bugs from the two yards deep in the end zone. Back to the five, the 10, and buried at the 12-yard line. Sheik got off a big, high kickoff, and it ended up uh, coming down at the goal line, but great coverage downfield, and Reeves, Jeff Reeves, makes the stop for Michigan right at the 12-yard line. So it's first and 10 for Iowa, their first possession of the second half, first and 10 from the 12-yard 12, 12 line. 
uh, several bowls represented here today, and we'll tick those off for you here after this next play. Iowa comes out first and ten with a split end Brown to the left, and then a shift. Now Brown will be a wide receiver. Hufford the tight end to the left side. Split end to the right is Ivory Webb. High formation. Handoff going left side. Jeff Fort the fullback out across the 20 and out to the 20 line before Keith Bostick and Jerry Berge make the stop for Michigan. That time Jeff Fort, who's starting the second half, carries out to the 23 yard line. Pick up of about 11 yards that time by Jeff Fort. So Fort starting in place of Norm Granger and still no Eddie Phillips. We have uh, Phil Blacher in there running the ball. Blacher and Fort in the eye as Iowa comes out on a first and ten from their 23. Wide receiver left, otherwise double tight ends for the Hawkeyes. Fullback counter coming back to Fort, and he's brought down after he leans it inside across the 25 to the 27. Paul Giergash, the left side inside linebacker, made the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. Pick up on the play of about four. It'll be second and six just underway in the third quarter with Michigan leading Iowa seven to six. Well, that Gergash is all over the field. He is. See why they're one of their top tacklers. Uh, another one in the tradition of great Michigan linebackers. Eddie Phillips is on the sideline, John, but he's uh, back away from the uh, players and he does have his helmet off. So I don't know if we'll see him again today or not. Pro set for the Hawkeyes on a second and six now from their 27. Bohannon keeps it, gets around the corner to the 30 and out to the 33 yard line. He had to improvise. Keith Bostick made the stop, and Bohannon that time started to do the fake to or the handoff to his fullback on a counter going back to the right side, and saw that there apparently read the defense there wasn't any opening, and pulled it back out and kept it himself. I don't know if that was devised that way or not, but it certainly worked out that way. Some good quick thinking by Bohannon to pick up the first down. First and ten for Iowa, from just short of the Michigan, or the, that is just short of the Iowa 34-yard line. This time Dave Moritz comes out wide to the right as a wide receiver, otherwise a double tight end offense and an eye formation. Bohannon calling him out against that Michigan defense. Fullback counter back to Fort out across the 35 and out to the 40 yard line as Paul Giergash over there to make the stop again for Michigan along with nose guard Doug James. But the play is marked out across the 40 to the 41 yard line and a pickup of seven. It'll be second and three now for the Hawkeyes. Jeff Ford done a good job since he's been in here and that little uh, fullback counter really working well. He's played uh, well here for the games he's played for Iowa this season so far. Iowa now on a second and three from their own 41. High formation, wide receiver right. It goes to Bohannon as he keeps it and he options off the left side gets the first down and then some again a great fake to the fullback Jeff Fort and carried it on himself on the option left side and Ben Needham the outside linebacker on that side made the stop for the Wolverine first and ten for Iowa now as they have the ball after that Bohannon keeper out to the 47 another great example of Bohannon's ball handling ability he really tucks that ball in the stomach keeps it himself and uh, gives the defense a lot to think about. Now the Hawks first and ten from their 47 as they break huddle. Pro set. Again, two tight ends and a wide receiver. Jeff Brown to the right side. A shift into an eye. Granger back in at fullback. Handoff straight up the middle. It goes to the tailback Blacher and out to the midfield. Doug James and Paul Giergash in the middle of the uh, Michigan defense make the stop. Pick up on the play of a little over three, about three yards on the play. It'll be second and seven now for the Hawks from midfield. Again, Michigan State leading Wisconsin at halftime, 19-0. Penn State leads uh, in their game, 7-3. Ohio State leading Illinois, 21-10. This says first quarter. I don't know if that's right or not. Sounds like they put the ball up already. High formation for the Hawks, second and eight. Hand off of the fullback counter going to Granger. Breaks one tackle and gets down to the Michigan 46-yard line before he's brought down. Picks up about another three or four yards. Tackle made by Doug James, the middle guard, and Ben Needham, the outside linebacker on the right side for the Wolverines. The ball marked just short of the 46. It'll be third down and about four yards to go for the Hawks. 11-10 left in the third quarter of play. Iowa losing right now to Michigan by a score of 7-6. And again, we'll draw a name from all those entries for that Hawkeye football in the fourth quarter, so stay tuned. 
<clears throat> third down and four for the Hawks. Big third down play here early in the second half. High formation, wide receiver right. Option keeper by Bohannon, and he'll be buried at the 45-yard line of Michigan. It's short of first down yardage. Tackle made by Tony Osborne, the right tackle, and Paul Geargash again in for Michigan on the play. Fourth down for the Hawkeyes. Ball marked at the uh, 45 of Michigan. Fourth and uh, a little over two yards to go for a first down. Looks like they're going to go for it, too. They're going to go for it. Big play here. Fourth and a long two for the Hawks. This could be a swing play in this ball game, and the Michigan crowd is up for its defense now. Bohannon looks over the line of scrimmage. Works out of an eye with two tight ends and a wide receiver to the right side. Pitch going left side. Blacher is knocked loose from the ball. It's loose, and who has it? Still loose down at the 40-yard line, and Michigan has got the ball. Michigan on a big turnover. Comes up with the ball, and coming off the field is Robert Thompson. With the ball, I suspect he's the one that recovered it. He did get... Uh, from the Iowa 40. Out of the eye. Wide receiver left is Carter. Fullback Stanley Edwards breaks one tackle and he's wrestled down just inside the 40 yard line by Todd Simonson and Bobby Stoops. Stanley Edwards skipped one tackle right there at the line of scrimmage and was eventually brought down. We'll see where it is marked at the 39 yard line. And it'll be a pickup on a play of a yard. It'll be second and nine. Thing that hurt uh, Iowa there, John. They had a nice drive going. They started on the 12 and moved it up to the 45, and that play lost 15 yards on the fumble. Out of the eye, Michigan now on a second and nine from their 39 or from the Iowa 39. Wide left is Carter. Wide right is Bean. Smith back to throw. Looks down the left side to Carter. Complete at the 15 and out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Anthony Carter with a great catch against Bobby Stoops. But also a great throw from Smith right on the money. And Michigan's down at the 10-yard line of Iowa. Carter just outruns the ball here. And a great leap, great stretch. And the coverage wasn't really too bad by his students, but the ball is perfectly thrown. A fingertip catch. And that's why Anthony Carter is Anthony Carter. Double tight end offense now for Michigan. And the wingback is also a tight end. Handoff going right side to Wolfolk. Looks for blocking. And Andre Tippett brings him down for a loss back at the 12-yard line. Tippett slid out there from the left defensive end spot and kept sliding and sliding. And the corner was gone for Wolfolk. And Tippett in with a big play. A loss of two by Michigan on the play. Carter comes back in now. And coming out of the ball game for Michigan was one of the tight ends that was in there, Caddis. Thing with Anthony Carter, he's got such great speed, and you have to give him such a cushion in order to keep him from breaking the big one on you. Again, the double tight end offense. Back to throw is Smith. He'll look down the middle. Right side complete. Incomplete. Intended for Norm Betts, and he just dropped it right at the eight-yard line. Coverage by Lou King, but Lou's coverage didn't mean a thing. Betts just dropped the ball. Similar to the play that Iowa ran in the first half, uh, Everybody was looking for Anthony Carter. He made his move, and the tight end just snuck out on the right side and uh, just dropped the football. It was right there. I think he was surprised at how open he was. Maybe uh, lost a little concentration there. Third down for Michigan and goal for the 12. Double tight end offense. Anthony Carter wide to the left. Back to throw again is Smith. Looks right. Down the middle. It's in intercepted in the end zone, and Cole just puts it down, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Pass down the middle, and uh, Todd Simonson and Mel Cole with the coverage back there. Cole comes up with the interception, and Simonson uh, with the tip the ball, and uh, it goes to Iowa on the 20-yard line. So Iowa comes up with a big defensive play here. That Iowa defense uh, seems to rise to the occasion, as it does. Smith had plenty of time to pick his man. The ball is tipped, however, into the air. Frazier and Simonson are all over the receiver, and alert Mel Cole picks it up and wisely stayed where he was. Time out on the field this time with 8.19 left in the third quarter. It's Michigan 7, Iowa 6. John Clossy, Denny Thies, and Tom Cornelis back at U of M Stadium. Iowa first and 10 from their 20 after the pass interception by Mel Cole. Operating out of the eye. Tailback Blacher off the left side. 
fights off one tackle and fights his way to the 22-yard line. Not much going on the left side that time. Not much going at all. Tony Osmond makes the stop for Michigan. It's second and eight now. Bowls represented here today as they look over these two teams. The Orange Bowl, Cotton Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Sun Bowl, Blue Bonnet Bowl, and Liberty Bowl all here looking over these two teams today. I don't think now one of them wouldn't like to have that Iowa contingent down oh, there uh, come holiday time. That's for sure. Iowa now second and eight in the 22. In motion, Jeff Brown out of the eye. Pitch going left side to Bleacher. Around the corner, 25, 30, and dropped at the 32-yard line. Je Bill Bleacher on the sweep going left side. Tony Jackson, the free safety, comes up to make the stop for the Wolverines. The ball at the Iowa, right between 31 and 32. Ben Needham is hurt for Michigan. He came up limping on that play. And the trainer's out there to help him out. Carlton Rose is his backup, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So Needham limping. Well, they oh, yeah, it is. Quite intimidating for a visiting team. Iowa first and 10 from their 32 with an eye, a split end right, wide receiver left. Bohannon. Play action fake. Back to throw down across the middle. It goes to Granger. He's hit twice and knocked down and right around the 40 yard line. Tackle made by Paul Giergash, the inside linebacker. Granger bounced off of one and was brought down by Giergash. So it'll be just short of the 40 yard line. Second down and about two after about an eight yard pickup on that play. Anthony Carter, 17 yard, 17 uh, yard touchdown reception. Gives him 24 touchdown receptions in his career and places him in a tie with Kirk Gibson for third place on the all-time Big Ten list in terms of touchdowns. Iowa now second and two from just short of their own 40. In motion, Jeff Brown out of the eye from the left side. Pitch going left side, Bleacher. He's at the 40, the 45 and dives to the 46, 47 yard line and good for an Iowa first down after about a five yard pickup, almost a seven yard pickup as a matter of fact. Giergash and Berge make the stop for Michigan again. The Hawks seem to be moving the ground, uh, the ball on the ground pretty well the second half, although the first drive ended uh, on a bad note. They seem to be uh, picking up ground when they want to. That's right. Iowa's running to that right side of the Michigan defense, testing that outside linebacker Carlton Rose, who came in in place of Ben Needham. The Hawks now out of the eye with a first and 10 from their 47. Split end right, wide receiver left. Bohannon back to throw. Here comes the blitz. He's out in the right flat on the run to Bleacher at midfield. Stutter steps to the 45, the 40, and brought down in the open field on a good tackle down here by Keith Bostic, the strong safety. And Dave Moritz gave him a good block as he came down the right side of the field, but great call that time by Bohannon as he saw the blitz coming and just dumped off the safety valve on the swing pass to uh, Bleacher for good yardage all the way down to the Michigan 40. Got it off just in time, too, because there's a lot of blue shirts swarming in on him. Also, I might mention that Carter's touchdown catch in the first half also moved him into a tie for sixth place with Ed Shuttlesworth for career touchdowns on the all-time Michigan list. Carter now has 26 during his career. Iowa first and 10 from the Michigan 40. And off in the fullback counter to Granger, breaks, bounces off one tackle and gets down around the 36. Paul Giergash and Jerry Berge again make the stop for the Wolverines. Two very aggressive tacklers for Michigan. We're calling that uh, Berge and Giergash's number quite a bit here this afternoon defensively. Well, they have great mobility and great, uh, you know, they anticipate the play quite well. These guys are good. There's no doubt about it. Four-yard pickup that time by Granger. It's second and six now for the Hawks as they have the ball at the Michigan 36. I've been impressed with the adjustments Iowa made at the half because they have been able to move the ball this half on the ground, which they couldn't do the first half. Split end left, wide receiver right. Again out of the eye. Play action fake, back to throw Bohannon out in the flat again on the run to Bleacher at the 30, 25, and run out of bounds on the far side of the field at the 22-yard line of Michigan. Marion Body made the stop. Dave Moritz again, uh, the split end, made a great block for Bleacher, and uh, he knocked off Giergash, who's been in on an awful lot of tackles for Michigan. First That's a devastating piece of blocking, too, because uh, Morris is actually blindsiding gear guys. He doesn't see him coming. He goes down, runs a little pass pattern, then comes back and turns into a blocker. Blacher with good speed, and Morris just comes back and just clears out that first tackle. They run the swing play to both sides now and with good success. Got him 13 yards on one side and 14 on the other. 
Iowa first and 10 from the Michigan 22 now. Double tight ends with a wide receiver right. That's Jeff Brown. He's back in motion to the left side now. Pitch going left side to Bleacher. Fights one tackler and battles his way down around the 20-yard line. Tony Osmond, the right tackle, makes the stop along with, guess who, Paul Giergesch. I think when in doubt, you can call Giergesch's uh, name and yeah. he'll be on the tackle nine times out of ten. Pick up of two yards that time. The ball down at the Michigan 20 now. Michigan leads Iowa by a score of 7-6 to six with 425 left in the third quarter of play. Iowa comes out second and eight now on the Michigan 20. Pro set. Split end to the left, the short side, a slot man to the left, and a timeout called by Bohannon again. He saw something in the Michigan defense that he didn't like. 4-12 left, 7-6 the Michigan lead. John Clossy, Denny Thiessen, and Tom Cornelis back at U of M Stadium where Iowa has a second and eight from the Michigan 20 after that timeout. 4-12 left in the third quarter. Michigan leads 7-6. Iowa with a split end to the short side and a slot man to that short side out of the pro set with Blacher and Granger. Now in motion back to the right is Ivory Webb. Play action fake. Back to throw Bohannon. Looks to the right. Looks to the right. Rolls right. Looks. Keeps. Heads up field. Gets to the 15, the 10, and brought down inside the 10-yard line. And it's enough for an Iowa first down. Robert Thompson up to make the stop for the Michigan Wolverines. And again, a good block up field for Bohannon by Ron Halston from Moline. Big 286 pound guard. Bohannon goes back to throw and couldn't find anybody. Good coverage downfield by Michigan and he rolled out and picked up the yardage. Geargash comes out now for Michigan and his replacement is Tim Anderson. And Gordy always knows how and when to go down before he takes a lick. And he that did wise that he held on to the ball, too, because no one was open. Unbalanced line right, first and goal. Handoff going right side. Blacher dropped for a loss. Big play. Tony Osborne, the right tackle for Michigan, was in the Iowa backfield and brought down Blacher for a loss back inside the 13-yard line, about a three-yard loss. There was that formation we saw it once in the first half where the tight end the lines up right next to the center, and everyone else is on the right side. Very different formation didn't work that time it looks, looks like Osmond that time may have gotten around that one tight end that was to the uh, weak side and came into the backfield and made the stop on Blacher it'll be second now and goal from the 13 of Michigan for Iowa pro set split end left wide receiver to the right Bohannon back to throw looks looks Pump, plenty of time down the middle incomplete intended for Morris in the back of the end zone coverage Keith Bostic Got his hands on it, almost intercepted it. He's upset he didn't. But so much coverage downfield. Michigan was only rushing three players, I think, and they had eight back there on pass coverage. Moritz was open there and was waving frantically, and by the time uh, Gordy saw him, the pass was, it was, took a little off. It just didn't quite get there. And then Bohannon signaled to him afterwards to come back for the football. Because <laughs> he had some plenty of room in the end zone to work with, and if he'd have come back, he might have been able to hit him. Third down and 13 now for the Hawks and the Michigan 13 yard line just inside the 13. Wide to the left is Ivory Webb, a wing back to the right side, Jeff Brown. Pro set between Blacher and Granger. Now Brown in motion back to the wide side. Blacher, play, play action fake, looks to the right, looks, avoids the tackler into the end zone. Jeff Brown incomplete. Double coverage down there. And down there were Bergay. Or make it uh, Jackson and Berge, or Bostic, I should say. Ben Needham was the one chasing Bohannon, and I think he had Brown open at first, but Bohannon didn't have enough room to get the ball off. And then by the time he recovered, Brown was covered, was uh, was not open any longer. He did a great job just getting the pass off to avoid being sacked for a loss, and it almost clicked. Brown with a great effort. The pass was there. Fourth and goal now from the 13, and Tommy Nickel will try another field goal with Tom Grogan holding. Down at the 20, it'll be a 30-yard attempt from the near hash mark, the right hash mark. There's the snap. Kicks on the way. It's got the distance. Good! Tommy Nickel hits a 30-yarder. And Iowa goes on top of Michigan now, 9-7. Roby kicks off, low line drive, bounces into the end zone over Edwards' head and out of the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line for Michigan. 
after Tom Nichols' 30-yard field goal puts Iowa up 9-7. Nichols has all nine points for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. It was a good drive by Iowa, too. They went 67 yards uh, after they turned the ball over on the 40-yard line on that fumble and had the pass interception in the end zone. They drove down to the 13 to get that field goal. Again, the Michigan offensive line comes up and starts waving their arms to get the crowd revved up. Michigan comes out with Carter split to the left. The slot man to the left side. Man in motion is Dunaway back to the right. Hand off Wolfolk going off right tackle and he gets out to the 24 before he's brought down. Mark Bortz, the left tackle for the Hawkeyes, makes the stop. Penn State 21, Syracuse 9 in the third quarter. Ohio State leads Illinois in the second quarter, 24-17. Michigan State leading Wisconsin at halftime, 19-0. Pittsburgh is leading Florida State now, 21-7 in the first quarter. So Pittsburgh trying to end that uh, big streak that Florida State's put on by beating some good teams. Michigan now second and six from their 24. High formation, split end left. Dunaway back in motion to the right. Bootlegging left is Smith. He looks to throw, fires back across the middle. Incomplete. Coverage, Bobby Stoops, pass intended for the tight end, Dunaway. And the crowd wants a pass interference, and I think Iowa might have gotten away with one there. Stoops anticipated uh, very nicely, although his legs did get kind of tripped up to the receiver at the time. Uh, Michigan coaching staff was a little hot at the uh, choice of uh, targets by Smith. Someone else was open there. They weren't hollering at the official very much. Third and six now from the 24. That one could have been intercepted just as easily yeah. as, as completed. Third and six from the 24 for Michigan. Carter wide to the left. Bean wide to the right. The eye with Edwards and Wolfolk. Smith from his 24. Takes that long count. Back to throw on the play action fake. Down the middle. Incomplete intended for Bean. It was off his hands and then he was knocked loose of the ball. It'll be fourth down. Coverage by Lou King on Vince Bean. But again, I think that was a pass that was just dropped. I like to see time of possession for this quarter, too. Yeah. Iowa's had two long drives. Michigan's had the ball for just uh, three plays here and uh, only four or five, I think, in their first drive. Punting situation. In is Don Bracken for Michigan, standing at his 10. Deep for Iowa is Jeff Brown back at his 35. The short man is Bobby Stoops. Bracken waiting on the snap. Takes a long time. There it is. Kick, a high floater. Brown will let it bounce. It takes an Iowa bounce, and it'll go down near midfield at the 49-yard line of Iowa. So it bounced about the 40 of Iowa and then took a bounce back toward Michigan and was finally down at the 49-yard line. 28-yard punt. You can just cut had in quite some time. Taken over on the 12 and the 20 so far in this half, now in the uh, 49. High formation. It's Granger and Bleacher. Double tight end with a wide receiver left. That's Dave Moritz. Fullback counter to Granger off the right side to the 50 and down to the 46 of Michigan. He skipped one tackle around the 50 yard line. Tony Osmond again on the stop for the Wolverines. But about a five yard pickup that time by Granger. It'll be second and five for the Hawkeyes at the 46 yard line. A minute 23 left in the third quarter, and Iowa leads Michigan 9 to 7 on the strength of three Tom Nickel field goals. Again, double tight end. Strobel right and Hufford left. Wide to the left is a wide receiver is Jeff Brown. Second and five. Pitch coming right to Blacher. Tries to get around the corner. He does, and he's bumped out of bounds right about the line of scrimmage. Gained little or no yardage on the play. It will be third and five now for the Hawks. Running him out of bounds here on the near side was Jerry Burgay and Tony Osmond. Osmond, a big junior tackle at 6'5 and 254, but he gets around, I'll tell you that. In comes John Alt now, a tight end for Iowa, and out goes Jeff Brown. Third down, five yards to go for the Hawks. Coming out on a power eye with Strobel also in there in the backfield just to the right of fullback Norm Granger. Tailback Bleacher straight ahead and he gets down to the Michigan 42. It'll be short of first down yardage. It'll be fourth down and about a yard, maybe two yards, depending on where they do mark it. 
And they unpile there. Tackle it's identical made by situation to uh, two series ago, yeah. and uh, they elected to go for it. And of course, the fumble came. We'll see what uh, the head hawk pulls on this one. Jerry Berge and Mike Bourne made the stop that time on Bleacher. Jeff Fort comes in now at fullback. Like he's going to go for it again. Norm Granger, and it looks like Iowa will go for it again. Fourth and a yard on the Michigan 42. Two tight ends out of the power eye, and the Michigan crowd gets on its feet for its defense. Tailback Bleacher dives down to the 40, and it'll be, depend on where the ball is marked. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down. Should be a first down. If based on where the linesman has marked the ball, that would be an Iowa first down. I think he's got it. First down for the Hawkeyes, just outside the Michigan 40. Doug James and Paul Geargash made the stop that time with Bleacher who whenever he carries the ball in short yardage situations seems to uh, throw caution to the wind made another dive for the first down and we're just about at the end of the third quarter of play I doubt if Iowa will get a playoff we're down to three two one and there's the end of the third quarter of play the score is Iowa nine Michigan seven quarter action John Fossey Denny Fisher and Tom Cornelis from University of Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor Iowa leading 9-7, and they have the ball first and 10 on the Michigan 40 as we begin fourth quarter action. Unbalanced line to the right. Handoff fullback Granger, off right tackle, and he gets down to around the 38 of Michigan. Good for about a two-yard pickup. Paul Geargash again in and on the tackle from Michigan, the uh, inside linebacker, along with his running mate at inside linebacker, Mike Boren. Just inside the 39-yard line, a pickup of two, second and eight now for the Hawks. Fourth quarter action, and you'll be able to hear... Uh, our play-by-play -play from this afternoon and see the replay of the Hawkeye game tonight on uh, Channel 8 starting at 10.30. Iowa again out of the eye with an unbalanced line to the right side. Second and eight. And off tailback. Blacher goes to the left side, the weak side, and picks up maybe a yard, and that's it. That's it. For a minute we thought we had a fumble there, but Blacher hung on, and it'll be third down. Tackle made by Robert Thompson and Cedric Coles on the left side of that Michigan defense. So now it'll be third down and seven for the Hawks. The ball at the Michigan 37-yard line, right between the 37 and 38. Moritz wide to the left, Strobel wide to the right as we work out of the eye. We haven't seen Eddie Phillips since the first half when he limped off the field. Bill blacher has been filling in. Bohannon, play action fake, back to throw. On a swing pass to Blacher, to the 35, the 30, and out of bounds at the 28-yard line of first down. Guys, Jerry Berge and Ben Needham up to make the stop for the Hawks. They ran Blacher out of bounds. Blacher's picked up good yardage three times on that swing pass play. That play is getting to be one of their bread and butter numbers so far today. Blacher with great speed, catching the ball, and just eluding that first tackler right there to make sure he gets the first down. The play that set that up, though, was the pass play earlier in the half when they hit Granger after they faked to him. They hit him over the middle. Now the linebackers have to hold inside for that play because there are running play action to him, and that allows Blacher open in the flat. Hawks first and 10 from the Michigan 28. High formation, two tight end. Fullback counter to Granger. He tries to elude one tackler, can't do it. Picks up about a yard before he's pushed back. Tony Osmond, the right defensive tackle, makes the stop for Michigan. We'll see where it is marked, right at the 29-yard line. In fact, they lost a little yardage on the play. It'll be second. Uh, we'll keep it at second and 10, though. 13-12 left in the game. Iowa leads Michigan 9-7. to seven. And with rare exception, Iowa has not given Michigan a great deal of opportunity to get into scoring position. The one time they made the big mistake here in the third quarter, in the third quarter Iowa's defense came up with a big interception. Second and 10. Double tight end offense. Man in motion back to the left is Ivory Webb. Pitch coming left side, Bleacher. He's down to the 25, breaks one tackle, and gets to the 24-yard line. Bleacher brought down by Tony Osmond and Ben Needham. Needham went out with a uh, gimpy leg earlier and now is back in the game. Seems to be getting around okay. Ball marked at the 24. Third down and six now for the Hawks after a four-yard pickup that time by Bleacher. Out goes uh, Strobel now. He's replaced by Dave Moritz. The Hawks are really practicing the old theory. The other guy can't score if he doesn't have the ball. That's they right. really held on to it. 
Good long drive right now. Split end left, wide receiver right on a third and six for the Hawks out of the eye. Bohannon, play action fake. Drops deep to throw. Looks back across the middle into the end zone. Incomplete. Dave Morris, the intended receiver, was in the back of the end zone, and he had to go high and out of the end zone to come up with the ball. Tony Jackson and Marion Body on the coverage and a flag back upfield. Smart play that time by Gordy Bohannon. They were trying to throw the screen, and the screen was well covered by Michigan, so he just threw the ball out of the end zone, made sure they didn't intercept it, and he didn't take a loss on it. Also a great grab by Morris. Even though he was out of bounds, he did hold on to it. Flag thrown against Iowa here. I really think Mortz has super hands. Yeah. I've really been impressed with his. He really control. does. Post pattern, right in fact, right behind the post. Morris went up between uh, two blue shirts. Caught the ball, but he was just out of bounds by the time he left. So Iowa will get the penalty here. And it's a big one. 15 yards. Takes it all the way back out to the 40 yard line. And the call. An eligible receiver downfield. Across the Hawks 15 yards, and now Tom Nickel will be in to punt. Iowa oh, wants timeout here. Timeout called by Iowa with 11.59 left in the game. It's Iowa 9, Michigan 7. One for Iowa after that costly, ineligible receiver downfield penalty. <laughs> they have a third and 21 at the Michigan 40. Now Nickel has gone back off after that timeout. And Iowa will run the third down play. Ground split left. Webb wide to the right. Again out of the eye. Bohannon, play action fake. Back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. Back down the left side. It's incomplete. Down at the 25-yard line. And it'll be fourth down now and 21 for the Hawkeyes at the Michigan 40. Coverage down there by Paul Geargash and Jerry Berge. Well, the thing that hurt on that penalty uh, was just that it took Iowa out of field goal range. If Iowa kicks the field goal there, then at least a touchdown is what it's going to take to beat them. Blacher, once again, the uh, target on that. He caught the it, Hawks but he was out of holding bounds. on the ball, but they've been out of bounds twice now. Fourth down and 21. Need to play in that Canadian field. <laughs> Bigger field. Nickel will punt. Stands at his, four, at his own 45. Deep is Jackson for Michigan. Back at his 10. The snap to Nickel. Gets it off, but just barely. Low one, takes an Iowa bounce, picked up by Jackson at his 4. Gives ground to the 10, and brought down at the 12, 13-yard line. Well, I'm Tackle. glad he did that. I think that ball was going to go in the end zone the way it was bouncing. Brad Webb made the stop for Iowa. The ball marked at the Michigan 13-yard line. And Nickel may have had that one blocked if he'd have kicked it normally. I think he kicked it under the guy that was coming in. It shows a lot of savvy for a freshman. There's, he's learned how to pooch kick, as they say. Very well. So here come the Wolverines. 11:44 left in the game. They take over on their own 13-yard line. 9-7, the Iowa lead. Anthony Carter wide to the right. Otherwise, a double tight end offense out of the eye. Steve Smith calling it out against that Iowa defense. Handoff going, keeps it this time after he fakes the handoff and gets out across the 15 around the 16 yard line before Todd Simonson makes the stop for the Hawkeyes. The ball marked at the 16. I think one thing as we look at uh, Michigan's offensive line, uh, the next time they come up, the, check the splits out. They really have some wide splits with their offensive people, but when you're as big as they are and as good as they are, you can afford to spread out and really spread that defense thin, and that's why they have such a good running attack. They're now second and seven. Back to throw is Smith, chased out of the pocket, heads up field. He's got some yardage, 25, 30, 35, and brought down at the 38-yard line. Steve Smith with a big gainer. Todd Simonson caught up with him. He was almost nabbed in the pocket, but Smith, who runs a 4 6 5 40, Turned it upfield and got plenty of yardage for the first down and a lot more after that. It shows that this game is a game of inches. He's almost caught behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, he gets past the rush of Webb inside, and then it's just a foot race. Simonson doing a great job to corral him. Turns it into a 23-yard game. First and 10 for the Wolverines from their own 39. Double tight end. Carter wide to the right. Hand off Stanley Edwards up the middle, and he dives forward and gets about four yards on the play 
Pat Dean brought him down. And it will be marked at the uh, Michigan 43. Pick up on the play of three. It'll be second and seven now. 10-24 left in this ball game, and Iowa leading Michigan 9 to 7. Bean this time in at split end goes to the left side. Anthony Carter, the wide receiver to the right, again out of the eye. Second and seven. Hand off going right to Wolf Oak, gets to the 45 and short at midfield. Iowa bent him back close to the first down, and we got a hassle going on now between Wolf Oak and Bobby Stoops. That's been brewing most of the afternoon. Stoops and Wolfolk mix it up out there around midfield, but they get between them. Simonson helped out on the tackle. It was a pretty good hit, too. Never taking that ball inside and then cuts to the outside. Stoops comes in. Plenty of Hawkeyes around. And he hit him pretty high. And he hit him hard. Interestingly enough, well, I have a measurement for the first down here. It's at the Michigan 49. The man that's got between Stoops and uh, Wolfolk was Ed Moransky. First down for Michigan at the 49. Moransky, the strong side tackle from Michigan, played football for Bobby Stoops' father at Youngstown Cardinal Mooney. They played together, and Moransky's the one that stepped between Stoops and Wolfolk. Moransky stepped in front of me. I wouldn't try to fight anybody either. No, not he at 6'7 and 275, that's for sure. Wolfolk's now just about 57 yards from becoming Michigan's all-time leading rusher. First and 10 for the Wolverines from their own 49. Lawrence Ricks is in a tailback now for the first time, a junior from Barberton, Ohio. Optioning left is Smith, tries to get around the corner. He does. He's to the 45 and dives to the Iowa 41-yard line. Again, close to first down yardage, and Jimmy Frazier and Pat Dean make the stop. It'll be a first down for the Wolverines. And the option keeper that time, and I'll tell you what, Smith can move. Steve Smith can really, can really move. Now he comes out. He's got something wrong with his helmet. And B.J. Dickey, senior quarterback from Ottawa, Ohio, goes into the game. It's at the 40-yard line of Iowa. Michigan first and 10. Dickey works out of the eye with a split end left and a wide receiver to the right. Hand off. Wolf Oak on the right side, and he'll be dropped at the 39, but he turned what should have been a loss into a gain of a yard. Mark Bortz and Andre Tippett made the stop on Wolfolk. Ball at the 39-yard line of Iowa. Yard pickup. It'll be second and nine now for the Wolverines. Nine minutes even left in the game, and Iowa leading Michigan nine to seven. Looks like Smith had a uh, contact lens problem. I believe it is, yes. Lost a contact lens. Pointed and, uh, eye, Michigan calls a timeout to give them more time to get Smith ready. So it's 8.55 left in the game, and Iowa leading Michigan nine to seven. Nine from the Iowa 39, high formation, double tight ends and a wide receiver left. That's Anthony Carter. Smith goes to his fullback. On the carry was Stanley Edwards, and he gets about a yard, and that's it. Mark Bortz brings him down at the 38-yard line. Not much running room that time for Edwards at all. Now Jim Erb comes in at linebacker for Iowa, and out comes Simonson on a third and seven. Let's be alert for uh, Carter now. Passing situation. Out of the ball game comes Norm Betts, the tight end. This time Dunaway's in a tight end, but we have split to the right, Bean, wide to the left, Carter, and the eye between Edwards and Wolfolk back to throw Smith. Looks, fires back across the middle. It's incomplete down to the right sideline, intended for Bean, and it was too long and incomplete. It'll be fourth down and seven yards to go. Lou King with the coverage down here. Smith's pass was just plain wide of the mark. Once again, that Hawk defense bends, but does not break. Fourth down now. See Michigan, Michigan could be in four down territory for sure. See what they're going to do here. It looks like they're going to go for it. Four players on the two deep for these two teams today from Youngstown Cardinal Mooney High School. Both Stoops for Iowa and Ed Moransky and Jerry DiOrio on the left side of that Michigan offensive line. DiOrio, the guard, Moransky, the tackle, all from Mooney. There we go, fourth down for Michigan. They're going for it on the Iowa 38. Fourth and eight. In motion, Anthony Carter. He gets the pitch coming back to the right side. Looks for the halfback pass. Heads up, failed, and he's dropped at the 38. Little or no gain, and Iowa takes over on downs. Andre Tippett 
made the stop. That was intended to be a pitch to Carter. He was supposed to throw the pass, it looked like. And Pat Dean also went on the stop, but he didn't have anyone to throw to. Some great coverage downfield by Lou King. He was the only man down there, and he was all over that one receiver, and Carter just had to eat it. Iowa takes over as the defense holds on. First and 10 now from their own 38-yard line. About an 8-minute and 11-second drive. Hang on here just a minute. Uh, it's time to draw a name from our entries for that uh, Iowa Hawkeye football this week. The winner is Pat Schlue, 15 years old, from uh, Boys Avenue in Davenport. Pat has two weeks to pick up his football. Last week's winner was Dave Heim of Rock Island, and Dave can come by and pick up his football, too. Iowa first and 10 from the 38. Hand off. Granger off right tackle out across the 40 to the 43, maybe the 44-yard line before he's brought down. Ranger on the carry. Bruce Kittle and is Bruce down. Kittle is hurt. Right at the 40-yard line. He's right at five from their 42-yard line. Pro set, wide receiver right, double tight end. Bohannon on the counter, going right side to Bleacher, and he gets down to around the 44-yard line, just short of the 45. Keith Bostic and Paul Geargash on the stop again for Michigan. Owen Gill, the freshman tailback, now in for Iowa in place of Phil Blacher. And Mike's injury Mike time Warren is hurt for Michigan. It looks like a shoulder injury as he's helped off the field. His backup is Jim Herman, a junior from Dearborn Divine Child High School. And he's playing for the old uh, coach from Dearborn Divine Child, uh, McCartney here, Bill McCartney. He's the old uh, football coach and basketball coach at Dearborn Divine Child. He's the defensive coordinator here at Michigan now. Iowa third down and four now from their own 44. Wide receivers to both sides. Back to throw is Bohannon. Down across the middle. Brown's got it inside the 45 to the 43 of Michigan. And Keith Bostic and Marion Body on the stop for the Wolverines. A great catch by Jeff Brown as he really had to use his concentration and uh, watch that ball because he was in heavy traffic. Bohannon really threads the needle on this one. Just a simple down and in pattern. Good for the first down. Brown not only watching the yard markers, watching the ball all the way in a big grab. First and 10 for the Hawks at the Michigan 43. 6.50 left in the game. And off to the fullback, Granger, and he fights his way to the 40-yard line of Michigan, just short of the 40. Geargash gets up off the top of the pile. I think he's got as many tackles as Iowa's got yards this afternoon. Keep calling his number. Mark at the 41. Pick up a three, second, and seven now. Going back to uh, Jeff Brown's catch, I think the last two games, he's really matured into a fine receiver. He dropped some passes early in the year that uh, should have been caught. And uh, he's been concentrating much better and catching the ball much better the last couple of weeks. 6-15 left in the ball game. Iowa now second down and eight from the 41 of Michigan. Fullback counter. It goes to Granger. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two and dives to the 38-yard line of Michigan. Tackle made by Jerry Berge. He's actually the one that tripped him up. And uh, it'll be third down now for the Hawks. Michigan State leading Wisconsin now in the third quarter, 19 to 7. The ball just inside the 39-yard line. Jeff Fort comes in at fullback now for the Hawkeyes. Good second ever by Granger. Could have been thrown for a loss back there, but actually had to get by two tackles. Third and five. On the Michigan 39. Out of the eye, split end and flanker to the right side. Bohannon, play action fake. Back to throw. Home run ball down the right side to Brown. It's incomplete. Down at the goal line. Double coverage. Marion Body and Keith Bostic down there as they converged on Jeff Brown, and there's no chance that they could have gotten the ball into him then. That Hawk Aiden Fry is a bit upset because Blacher was wide open on the short pass, and he had the first down easy, but instead he went for the home run and came up short. But Blacher, number 28, was all alone. Brown really didn't have much chance to get to this one. Heavily covered. Tom Nickel comes in now for the punt. Ball on the Michigan 39-yard line, and he'll try and pin the Wolverines down deep in their own territory with 5.20 left in the game, and Iowa leading Michigan by a score of 9-7. to seven. Tom Nicholas kicked three field goals. Deep is Jackson now for Michigan to receive the punt. Nickel awaits the snap. A little high, gets it off. 
low one. It'll go into the end zone and come out to the 20. It bounced inside the five. And another Iowa player injured down at the 40-yard line. Changed the momentum in this game at all by taking their big lull in the game. Michigan now first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Optioning right, Smith turns it upfield, and boy, is he tattooed as he gets to the 23. Pat Dean, Andre Tippett make the stop. Tippett had him around the legs, and Dean hit him right in the numbers. Pick up on a play of three. It'll be second and seven now for the Wolverines. Vince Bean comes in at split end now. I've really been impressed with Smith as a runner today. Yeah. He's only a sophomore from Grand Blanc, Michigan, and he's developed as each game went by for the Wolverines this year. Michigan second and seven now from their own 23 out of the eye. Smith looks back to throw, fires back across the middle. It's complete out across the 40 to the 46 yard well, line. Uh, the other official said he was juggling it, and he's not going to call it complete. He said he was out of bounds, but he finally gained control. Called the incomplete. So one, and Bo is beside himself. I didn't know Bo could get angry. <laughs> I don't think Bo's asking him over for dinner right now. <laughs> I think he might even be telling him he'll never work again in the Big Ten. Well, Bo couldn't do that, could he? <laughs> that was good coverage downfield by Lou King and just a fine catch. As we'll see tonight. Uh, or a non-catch, whichever way you want to believe it. King has turned around. The receiver has turned around. And the official from behind called a juggle. No, it's an incomplete pass. I've got to say it's a great call. <laughs> Third where down. You sit. <laughs> Third and seven for Michigan now near 23-yard line as Smith goes back to throw again. Has plenty of time. Fires. It's incomplete. Out at the 44. Juggled again. Juggled again there by the receiver. Coverage downfield by with the intended for Vince Bean. The coverage by Mel Cole and Lou King. So it's fourth down, and Michigan sends its punting unit on the field. 4.28 left. Uh, John, this uh, is going to be a key time again for Iowa's offense. They, they've got to get a drive going, and, and uh, if they have to punt, they've got to try to keep Michigan pinned down deep. Fourth and seven from the 24. Bracken will punt from his 10. Nobody for Iowa is back deep to receive the punt because they think it might be a fake. There's the snap. Bracken gets it off, no problem. High, beautiful floater. Michigan covers downfield. It bounces inside the 30. Takes a slight Michigan bounce down to the 26-yard line. I think that's smart. Uh, you're protected. Tight ends. Wide receiver to the right is Moritz. Out of the eye. Bohannon to his tailback. Bleacher up the middle to the 30, the 35, and out to the 36-yard uh, line. Nice carry that time by Phil Bleacher. You have to give the official a tackle on that, along with Gergesh. Must have been the umpire again, huh? Those poor guys take a beating in there. I'll tell you, <laughs> it takes a lot of courage to be an umpire. <laughs> Robert Thompson on the tackle that time for Michigan. Blacher with a good move right up the middle and good blocking for the Hawkeyes. Michigan trying all the time to strip that ball as the runner goes by. Big play on first down when you want to keep this drive going, too. Second and two now for the Hawks. Out of the eye with a wide receiver left, and there's movement. Hufford jumped, got back. Now the handoff. Blacher goes right side, and he'll be dropped after a little bit of a gain. Hufford moved and then got back, and no flag was called. The crowd wanted an offside or illegal procedure. Bostic and Bourne make the stop for uh, Michigan. The ball marked the 36. Third down and two. Talk about that, John. The interior lineman, tackle to tackle, cannot move once they're in their stance. The ends can, can break their stance and be all right. His hand was not on the ground. He's in the upright position. So he's all right as long as he does not uh, cross that neutral zone. Third and two now for the Hawks. 2.52 left. Double tight end. I formation. In motion is Ivory Webb. There's a play. Delay a game. Too much time. Boy, that's costly. We're under, uh, we're at 245 now, too, John, in the ballgame. Uh, first down there would have uh, got that thing uh, down under two minutes, and uh, Michigan would have had to use the timeout. It's a tough time for a penalty like that. It'll make it third down and about seven yards to go for a first down now at the 31-yard line. 
too much time. And when it they, gets late in the game, the name when Michigan gets the ball back that you always think of is Anthony Carter. And the one thing, though, that penalty did, they did start the clock again after the penalty. So even though they lost five yards, they're probably going to pick up about 20 seconds on the clock. Third down and seven. Pro set. Wide receiver and slot man to the left side. A split end left. In motion, Ivory Webb back to the right. And another one. And another too much time call. And Hayden Fry is really upset. I want to know what they're counting the 30 seconds from. From what point are they counting the 30 seconds? Coach Schembechler and his staff are upset too that that clock's been moved again. 2.17 left. Well, we have both coaches uh, lathered up here. Third down and 13 now. Third and 12, actually. 2.17 left. They didn't start it this time. This is a rule where the official, it's under his discretion whether or not to start it. Pro set now, Iowa third and 12. In motion's Ivory Webb. Back to throw, it goes on the draw to Blacher. Left side, Geargash on the stop along with Doug James, the nose guard, and it'll be fourth down. No gain that time. Fourth down and a punting situation for Iowa. Two minutes and two seconds left in the game, and a Michigan timeout is called by Michigan. Out on his 10, and you can bet Michigan's going to try. They need the big play. 9-7, the Iowa lead over Michigan with 2.02 left. Look at them, look at them charging up. Now a couple guys peel off. There's the snap. It's high. Roby gets off a low line drive. Carter gives ground back to his 20. Here comes back up the field, 30, and run out of bounds at the 32-yard line for such a low punt. Iowa got downfield pretty quickly to cover that one. Brad Webb down here to run Carter out of bounds. You can see both players on both teams have a lot of respect for each other, the way they're helping each other up after uh, knocking them down as hard as they can. They help each other up. It's been a good, hard-hitting football game. Just a good college game. We're down to 151 left. Michigan, possession of the ball in their own 33. High formation. Back to throw is Smith. Looks down and out left side. Carter. Complete and he's knocked down at the 44 yard line. Tracy Crocker tattooed Carter as he brought the ball down. And it should be enough for a Michigan first down. And we see uh, Ali Aji Sheik down there warming up for a possible field goal. Yep. First and 10 for Michigan now on their 44. Out of the eye, the clock running. Smith back to throw again. Looks back across the middle. It's complete to Bean into Iowa territory at the 39. And a flag is thrown back upfield. A flag Michigan. is thrown against Michigan, and it looks like it should be a hold. Number 65 for Michigan is just hitting himself on top of the helmet like he thinks it's called on him. It looks like a hold on 65. Holding against Michigan, and a big break for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Okay, John, uh, the other thing we'll have to watch now is whether or not the clock will start. That was a completed pass, but I don't know if he got out of bounds or not. If he did get out of bounds, the clock will not start again. The march off against Michigan. 15 yards. Comes out. Stephen Humphreys goes in. Wide to the right is Carter. Wide to the left is Bean. Smith back to throw. Quick pump. Home run ball down the right side. King down there step for step with Carter, and it's incomplete. King going for the interception. Couldn't quite come up with the ball. Like Luke King had it for a minute there, but in his, his momentum carried him out of bounds. He dropped the ball. One minute twenty-nine 20, to go. Minute twenty-nine. Michigan one timeout left. And Iowa sure like to get a turnover here, which they almost did on this last play. Have to be alert, maybe for a screen pass in here. And we again always have to be alert for Carter, wherever he is on the field. But uh, uh, Bean has also come up with uh, a big catch today of 17 yards. Wide to the left is Bean. Wide to the right is Carter. Second and 25. Smith on the draw to Wolfolk, and he'll be dropped at the 33. On the draw, a nice tackle that time as Wolfolk went by. Looked like Andre Tippett got him, along with uh, Herb. Michigan going without a huddle, down to a minute 13 left. Third down, and about 23 yards to go. Smith back to throw. Chased out of the pocket, buys time, looks to the right. 
Tippett tries to catch him, can't get him from behind. He's at the 40, and there he's nailed by Mel Cole at the 43-yard line before he could get out of bounds. It'll be cut back in there, and I think he could have got out of bounds. It's fourth down now. Clock running, 46 seconds left. Michigan trying to go without a huddle. They're going to have to stop the clock. Fourth down and 12 for Michigan at their own 43. Back to throw. Smith. And he is incomplete. He was almost sacked by Andre Tippett, and the Hawks take over and down. Smith could not get it off in time. Tippett, and he tried to throw, and he just didn't get enough on the ball. It was incomplete, and Iowa takes over. Look at that Hawkeye bench and about 5,000 gold and black rooters over here that made the trip up to Ann Arbor. They're all going bananas over there in the stands. And we can smell roses coming into the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa will have to uh, probably run, what, one play, uh, two plays. Michigan will call timeout after the first play to stop the clock, and all Iowa has to do is drop on it. Quarterback drops on it twice, and the game's over, and Iowa will probably be in sole possession of the first play. 31 seconds left. Wide to the right is Ivory Webb. Everyone else in tight. Bohannon falls on the ball. 28 seconds left, 27, 26. Michigan, will they call a timeout? They yeah, want now to. they do with 22 seconds left. Wide to the right. 9-7. Iowa the lead. Pro set, everyone in tight except for Webb. Bohannon falls on the ball, and that'll do it. That's the ball game. Clock winds down, and the, Michi the Iowa crowd will count it down. The Hawks are... Jumping for joy in the middle of the field, the offensive unit. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Upset City. 12th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes defeat the 5th ranked Michigan Wolverines on their own field by a score of nine to seven. And unless there's been a big change in the Michigan State Wisconsin game, this will give the Hawks sole possession of first place in the Big Ten Conference.